Hello everybody, welcome back to the Zava Sound YouTube channel. My name is Donald Odom and thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be discussing how I have accomplished overlaying uh, CG graphics in OBS and then sending them right back out of a Decklink card um, versus using OBS to stream. I will say this much, a lot of people are using OBS to stream and this video is really not for you. What I'm gonna be talking about is getting a video feed into OBS and then getting that feed back out of OBS using the Decklink cards. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is taking my program feed from my ATEM, sending it into the OBS and then lay, overlaying uh, siphon lower thirds or whatever I really need, uh, whether those low, lower thirds are in ProPresenter or if they're in OBS, if they're generated in ProPresenter and then sent out via a siphon feed. It doesn't really matter. What we're going to be talking about is getting a deck link input into OBS and then sending it back out of that same deck link uh, card as an output. There's two methods to doing lower thirds. You could just turn off this video right now if you're uh, version one. I kind of made a diagram. I'm kind of famous for that. Um, I feel like diagrams really do help people a lot. This is your first option keying in lower thirds. First pro, it gets the job done. Second pro, it is pretty easy. Here's your cons, and this is where people usually turn off of the idea of doing lower thirds, um, you know, keying them out, or, or keying them in, rather, um, using, uh, like, an ATEM switcher has the ME functionality. Well, all, all video mixers have ME functionality, but whether or not they have the ability to, you know, key out certain things that's up to the mixer uh, all I, I believe all black magic atem switchers can do some some form of keying your now let's go into the cons you cannot do crossfades between slides what does what do i mean by that so here's a siphon feed from uh transformation church in middletown new york where i work um this is a unlisted video uh you can't go find this on the internet so you guys are getting the exclusive tour today so basically, what we have here on our lower thirds is, let me find a spot. You can see that the lower thirds are actually cross-fading um, into each other. Or from, you know, there it goes. So it's cross-fading out. You cannot do that doing the keying. The reason you can't cross-fade while you're keying, you can cross-fade, but it's complicated. The most video mixers are going to be extremely specific to the color you're keying out. So say you are switching. There's a way to get around this, and I'm going to tell you guys. But uh, the problem with keying your lower thirds is that you can't do that crossfade. So once, say this, we're going to come back to this in a second. Hold on one second. So say your, your lower third is there, and it starts to transition into the next one. So say you're sending your, you know, sending it out via a siphon feed with this green background to your ATEM and you want it to just key out the green, but you want to have it transition into the next slide. It's not going to work because since there's going to be a slightly different form of green under I am a child of God there, that lower third, it's not going to key that green out. So you're going to get this weird green look. And if you're okay with that, then I guess, I guess good for you and, you know, roll with it. The way to get around that is to put a static like black behind it. Now, most people are not going to like that, but you could put a rectangle behind it and then fade it because then the background is not necessarily going to change, but everything around this black uh, background is going to um, get keyed out. So the black background, as long as that stays in your lower thirds or fitted inside, that will work with a crossfade. All right, now let's go to page two. CG overlay pass through. This is my method of doing it. It's my favorite method of doing it. Um, pros, it's extremely high quality. It's what the pros do. I mean, that's the common saying, right? Uh, you can do the crossfades, and it's accomplished outside of your video mixer. So you're not relying on your video mixer to do it, but I'm going to come back to that in a second, because video mixers, there's really no point of not doing it inside of your video mixer if you're okay with not having the crossfades. And you can do the animated lower thirds. Some video mixers... Will allow, will allow you to actually use MOV files in your media media player slots. MOV or MP4 files, some of them will. I don't, mine doesn't, so I've had to figure out another way uh, to animate my lower thirds. Cons. 
since you're doing since you're relying on your computer to process the entire video image versus just sending out this green image with your lower thirds on top of it, it's super CPU hungry. You need to have a really powerful computer or you may need two computers to run it. Um, what I mean by that is a lot of people want to run this CG overlay process um, on the same computer they're generating the lower thirds from. So they want to be able to send the siphon feed out of, say, ProPresenter 7 and feed it on top of the uh, program feed from your, uh, your, your, your video mixer and expect your computer to run normally. Now, here's my confession. I have a Mac Pro here, brand new, 2020 Mac Pro. That's what we use as our primary video server, really. And it can easily handle this with no problems at all. It, it's it's like cake work for this computer. I mean, it, doing this is, is, is nothing for it. So we do use one computer to both generate those lower thirds, generate all of our in-room in, in uh, video, and doing the CG overlay process. Now... The other CPU intensive component of this is streaming. A lot of people are going to want to stream uh, inside of OBS with this method. That's where, this is where you can start playing it safe by using an external encoder. And that's what we're talking about today. How to get this done. How to get the process of doing this done. So, your first component here. I'm going to make that light. I'm sorry, we're going to make that black. We're going to do that. We're going to make this fill white. Is sourcing, right? What, what's your source going to be? It's going to be your program feed. Most people are using the ATEM product line. Some people are using uh, TriCaster. Other people are using Roland. Other people are using vMix, in which case you wouldn't even have to worry about this, but say you wanted to worry about it. All right, so where, where, you're sourcing your program feed, all right? Whether that's from an ATEM, a TriCaster, a vMix program, Roland, whatever your video switcher is, that final program output, right? We need to, you need to get a hold of that for this example. The next thing we're going to be doing is running that program output into a capture device. This is, this is important. A lot of people forget about this part. Your capture device, the one that I recommend is the DeckLink Duo 2. Now, that's a PCIe card, so you need to get a Sonnet chassis for that, or if you have the internal slots like I do on the Mac Pro, you just boop, pop them in there. And bada bing, bada boom, you can have four inputs or four outputs or two inputs or two outputs, depending on the what, what you're trying to do. So basically, we're going to take our program feed, go into this DeckLink Duo 2, right? Then what we're going to do is go into our CG overlay software. Also, I just want to make something clear real quick. This used to be extremely expensive to do. This is this is free now. If you're using um, OBS, which is what I would um, really recommend, so we're gonna run our run our capture. Our program feed is coming into our DeckLink Duo two, and then going into OBS to getting light and getting layered. So then the other part is the Pro Presenter Siphon for lower thirds. So we're going to make that nice and bold. All right, and then this is going to end up running out also in... Make that a bit smaller... So our Pro Presenter Siphon is then going into the CG Overlay software, or OBS, and then it's going back out of the same DeckLink card. Uh, to your, uh, from in my case, it's a Video Hub, Video Hub, 
and then it gets sent to my encoder, which can be a um, LAO, a living as one encoder, or Terra, deck. It really doesn't matter what your encoder is. Basically, it's going into OBS and then coming back out, and you're layering your CG on top of that. So we're going to be talking about CG, by the way, stands for color graphics. So what, you know, if you're doing color generation or, or you know, color generation, uh, color graphics, I really, I kind of forget what it is. But um, uh, anyway, we're talking about graphics generation. I know it as CG overlay. So we're overlaying our CG, whether that is housed in, because what's cool is you could send out a lower third via siphon into OBS, or you could store lower thirds in OBS, or you could do a combination of both like myself. So like, like pastor names and stuff, I just stick that in the OBS. And then like sermon slides, if I want to trigger it from a prop, which I've handled in another video, you could do that via a pro presenter siphon. So anyway, this is basically what we're doing. Uh, so it's coming from the program feed into our capture device, into OBS, getting overlaid with the siphon feed or whatever OBS is overlaying, excuse me, and then back out the same capture device to your video hub or whatever, to your encoder or whatever, or what you're doing is streaming direct from OBS, which I do not recommend unless you have two computers running OBS and two Decklink Duo 2s to output to. So what you could do too is you could do this method. Or you could do this method which is going to be another instance of OBS on a separate computer. Or what you can do is go straight out to stream i.e. Facebook, YouTube, or Restream. All right, so your program feeds going into your capture device, then into your CG overlay software, OBS, and then you have a few options after all this has been done, your layering. You can go back out the same capture device to your external encoder, living as one encoder, Terra Deck, whatever, or you can go into another instance of OBS, or you can just directly stream from that overlay software or that version of OBS that's acting as your overlay software. We don't do that. We do this method. Bing for green. Go, G means, or green means go. That's what we do. All right, so now let's go into OBS. I, here I am rambling. Also, real quick, what does it look like? Um, what do our sermon slides look like, in case you're wondering? There we go. So basically, what we're doing here, you can see how it kind of slides down like that. You could not do this doing the... You actually could do this one doing the uh, keying in, but I wouldn't really recommend that. All right, so how do we set up OBS? Um, basically, what we're doing is we're taking our source, which is this Blackmagic video device right-click and properties on that. You can see basically what's happening is I'm taking the input from De Decklink Duo 3, the program feed, an input from the ATEM switcher, an output from the ATEM switcher coming in. And you can see that I can, if I lock that back, well, I don't need to lock it, but I can then cut my shot on my switcher. Sorry, you could probably barely hear me and then switch it around. That's just my test shot, which I recommend everybody having something like that with a green border. So you can go check TVs that might have a resolution cutoff on the sides. Uh, that's all besides the point. But basically what we're doing is we're taking our video input in, and then you could do lyric um, or lower third generation, like I'm gonna show you here. You can see that lower third is gonna be generated on this image. So it's we're taking this video file and layering it on top of this Blackmagic video device, all right? And then if we go into Pro Presenter, any day now, all right, and I can, oh, there's an update, do that later. Then I can click 
this, and you can see it pops up here as a lower third. And then there's no keying involved. So you can see if I go preview that, it's sending this lower third out. Now I've shown in a different video how to do this. What we're talking about is getting this image back out of the deck link card versus streaming directly from uh, OBS, which you can do right there, start streaming. You can go punch in your streaming information here under stream, but we're gonna be just talking about how to get that video output back out. Now you guys have been waiting for this moment. I have been building on this for 15 minutes now. All you gotta do, go into OBS, click tools, click deck link output, decide which output you wanna send, decide which out of, decide which resolution. So you can pick your output here. I have two cards, so there's a lot of outputs or inputs as well. Pick your resolution, and then what you're all you're gonna do is click start. And it should be going out. <laughs> so anything that's generated here after your so basically your program feed's coming in. It's gonna get layered with stuff from ProPresenter, it's gonna get layered with all of these lower thirds here, and then it's gonna get sent back out of that card to your encoder. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So we kind of learned a few things in this video basic keying information, and then also um, essentially what what people generally do for, for graphic generation. A lot of people have this false pretense about how people, how professionals do it. This is the more professional way to do it. I'm not so sure OBS is um, a professional grade software. I highly doubt today news is using OBS, but uh, it's free, and if it's free, it's for me, and it should also be for you if you're on a budget. So yeah, that's basically what we're doing here. I mean, that's the way I have it set up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. One last thing before I end it, though. You can always, here's our ATEM software. Don't mind the uh, the chicken right here. That's a chicken harness I found the other day. I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> uh so the other thing you can do is come into here and do uh, an upstream key. So you could take a video input. So you, you could run a video in, uh, input from ProPresenter out with a keyed background using a look and the lower thirds and then key your text in using one of these upstream keys. And then you also have downstream keys, which are like, you know, mass or, uh, you know, various things, source keying and stuff like that. Uh, so you can use your upstream key, chroma pattern, to do a key from ProPresenter. And also, don't get me wrong, it might not be what most big churches use or most you know um, professionals use doing the uh, chroma key keying for your lower thirds, but churches like Bethel Church in Redding, California, they do it. I've seen them do it. Um, so, you know, if they do it, I'm sure a lot of other people do it. There's probably more people keying in their graphics using, you know, a chroma key background than there are people actually overlaying it in the church environment right now. So don't feel guilty either way. I just prefer this way. So hopefully you guys understood all that. And if you don't, leave a comment, and I'd love to explain further. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.